the mighty and resilient Merrimack River, carving through the communities of our great region. My name is Linda Lorden, proud president of Merrimack County Savings Bank. And like the river that serves as our namesake, we're a constant yet ever-changing presence. Because to us, it's bigger than banking. It's about powering communities and putting people first. It's about knowing where you came from and where you're going. That's Merrimack style. Visit us at themerrimack.com. Would you like to know how to write a $16 million blog post? Listen in. Welcome to Paper Napkin Wisdom, where we share pearls of wisdom shared by some of the world's top entrepreneurs, leaders, and difference makers. Here's your host, Govin J. Raman. Hi, my name is Govin J. Raman, and this is Paper Napkin Wisdom. I'm really excited that you're joining me here today for episode number 144, David Miriman Scott. If this is the first time you're listening to Paper Napkin Wisdom, Make sure that you subscribe on Google Play Music, on iTunes Podcasts, on uh, Stitcher, or just about anywhere else, because you can find Paper Napkin Wisdom and 143 other episodes just as good as this one. And you won't want to miss my conversation today, because like I said off the top, if you could write a blog post worth $16 million, would you like to know how? Would you like to do that? Well, David is going to explain how to make that happen. Let's listen in on my conversation with David. David, I'm thrilled to have you on Paper Napkin Wisdom with me here today. Thanks for joining me again. Oh, of course. It's wonderful to be back. Yeah, I, I certainly loved our last conversation. And, and I know this one is going to be really great for everyone listening. And, and, and let's just dive right in. Uh, sure. You shared a great Paper Napkin with me. Would you mind reading it out loud to the audience, please? I would be happy to. I said, to grow your business, align your marketing to the news of the day. Real time is key. So, you know, why did you choose to share that with me and my audience today? Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, I'm a huge um, advocate of a concept I call newsjacking. It's a concept that I pioneered. Newsjacking is the art and science of injecting your ideas into a breaking news story. Um, And the second reason why it's so important is that so few businesses are actually operating in real time. Most businesses are tied up in a long-term planning process. So from the perspective of marketing, what most, most businesses do is they plan, for example, an email marketing um, uh, initiative for next week. Uh, Perhaps they've got a trade show they're going to be doing next month. Perhaps they've got a new product release that they're going to be doing in Q2. Um, You know, this kind of thing. Uh, But the market is happening right now. The world is, is, is doing things right now. There's news breaking right this second. So um, I'm, I'm, just have so many um, wonderful examples of organizations that tie their business to the news of the day. And then as a result of that, they get noticed by the media and get written up or broadcast about. They get, they generate sales leads and they also grow business and all of that's free. You don't have to pay for any of that. So, but let me understand this for a second. You know, you you said that most companies plan out their media strategy or plan out their marketing message. Yes. And then they just sort of run the message, right? They just sort of run through the message. And I know that, you know, we're, we did our annual plan and we've got our quarterly priorities and we've built our, all of that stuff is all built out. So you're, but what you're not saying is that you shouldn't do that stuff. You're just saying, no, that's okay. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, But what you're doing when you do that is you're planning when you're going to communicate with your marketplace, both existing and potential customers, on your timetable. You're not planning when you're going to uh, communicate to your marketplace on the timetable that's most important to them. And by tying your brand to the ideas of the news, again, I call this concept newsjacking, what you do is you figure out, okay, here's a news story that I can draft off of, that I have some expertise around, that I have 
um, an ability to add a new take on. So let me just give you an example, because I think examples work really well uh, for this concept of newsjacking. And I've got, you know, we can we can do a couple different ones. We can do a B2B example. We can do an example from a nonprofit organization. We can do a, an example uh, from a large organization. So that's a different things. Um, uh, so for my first example, I'd love to share with your audience is um, a, an, a young very small business entrepreneur. His name is Trent Silver. He runs a business called Cash for Purses. And Cash for Purses, what they do is they buy used handbags from people online, and then Trent um, has them fixed up, and then they on-sell them either through eBay or through physical stores, typically consignment shops. Um, he, was, he deals in high-end handbags, typically Prada, Louis Vuitton, Coach, things like that. His biggest problem with this business is getting more handbags to be able to fix up and sell. So he looks to the news to try to tie his brand to, in, to things that are happening in the news. And he learned um, that Lindsay Lohan was having money troubles. And that was all over the news uh, about a year ago. Lindsay Lohan is having money troubles. So what he did was he wrote a blog post offering to buy Lindsay Lohan's used handbags. And then he sent a link to that blog post to various reporters. So what he's very cleverly done is taken a story that has to do uh, with a celebrity and then ties his brand to it because Lindsay Lohan's famous for her handbags. In fact, there are a number of photographs showing her with high-end handbags and he offers to buy them. He ends up getting written up in um, dozens of media outlets. He ends up getting television coverage, print coverage, um, the Huffington Post, the Inquisitor, Radar Online, TMZ, all of these um, outlets that have a that, that talk about celebrities. They were they were talking about Trent Silver's offer to, uh, in one case, one of the headlines said solve her money problems. Um, every single one of those organizations, if it was an online publication, actually linked back to Trent's business. He ended up getting. Um, 8,000 online inquiries from people. And of those 8,000 online inquiries, he clo he closed 18% of them. He generated a quarter of a million dollars from this one initiative. So the point here is that you don't say, okay, I'm going to do a campaign to get my message into the marketplace three weeks from now. You say, I'm going to tie myself to the news story of the day. And that's what Trent did, generating a quarter million dollars. He's a 22-year-old um, entrepreneur. So, you know what I, I think is really amazing, and I, and I think that's an incredible story. I mean, just, and that's a small business story. That's one that a business of any size can really relate to and achieve, which is, which is fantastic. So it's a 10 And there's no, there's no question about that. And I'll, t and I'll tell you why, because Trent learned those ideas from me. And he, he, and the reason I know about this story is he emailed me and said, David, let me share with you what I did. And so... Um, there's no question that anybody listening in can say, wow, you know, I like this idea. Maybe I should give it a try because um, this example of, with Trent and I, another one I'm gonna sh I'd like to share as well in a second are people who learned these ideas from me. Yeah, so, you know, the, the, before we move to the second example, the, the other thing that I really like the, about the story with Trent is that it, it's not like he bent his message to suit the situation. He knew what he did. But but he he articulated it in a relevant, like you said, uh, on a timetable that was relevant and important to the market, and that's what made it interesting. You know, that's exactly that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And so there's a number of different elements to this. Um, one is you have to have a legitimate tie to the story. You can't just take any old product and tie it to any old story. I mean, you have to have a legitimate tie where journalists and potential customers will, will understand why it is that you're talking about this particular thing. And in this case, that's absolutely true. Um, uh, so uh, another, uh, another example is a guy called Mitch Jackson. He's a senior partner at a, a company called Jackson and Wilson. Um, they're a law firm in Southern California. And 
Mitch ties himself to the news frequently. So, for example, um, a couple of weeks ago, as we're recording this, um, Charlie Sheen announced that he's HIV positive. Now, that's a story that has legal ramifications. He also um, talked about when Bill, uh, Bill Cosby was doing his deposition, the legal ramifications of that. So he looks for stories both of national interest and also local to Southern California that have a legal component that he can comment on. Then on his blog at Jackson and Wilson is the name of the firm. You can just Google it. You'll find him. You'll see his wonderful blog where, you know, every two or three blog posts, he talks about something that's happening in the news. Now, a few things happen when he does this. The first thing that happens and this doesn't happen on every single blog post. I'm not suggesting that every time you do this, you're going to have an amazing success. But sometimes when he blogs about something going on in the news and talks about the legal ramifications, reporters and editors want to interview him. They want to get put him on TV. They want to quote him in the, in the newspaper, in the Los Angeles Times or whatever uh, publication. Um, uh, in, in his local marketplace and sometimes nationally. The second thing that happens is that when people read about a story around something uh, going on that has a legal ramification, they might think, oh my gosh, I have a similar re legal issue going on. Maybe I should contact this guy because he's just written this blog post about all the different ramifications of Charlie Sheen's um, uh, uh, announcement that he's HIV positive from the legal perspective. And so they actually sometimes reach out to him and, um, and in some cases even um, uh, retain him to, uh, to provide legal advice. And in fact, what Mitch told me is that he has retained a number of clients using this technique who find him through search or, or read about him or see him on television rep responding to one of these stories. And then he's generated multi-million dollar verdicts or settlements for many of these, for some of these clients. So, you know, those of us who know how lawyers are paid know that in a roundabout way, he's just told us he's generated over a million dollars worth of, of business from this concept of new jacking. Uh, and again, Mitch learned these ideas from me. Um, I've actually created an online course. It's called Master Newsjacking. It has all the steps you need to be able to do this kind of approach. And uh, just go to newsjacking.com if you're interested and it's where, uh, where the, the online course is housed. That's great. And, and you know, the, the thing that I think is, again, really interesting about Mitch Jackson's story along with Trent's story uh, and both of them is they they have a clear sense of themselves that they, they, they have a, this legitimate tie and they, they make an authentic, at least authentic enough. I mean, the, the, the purpose of, of the newsjack around Lindsay Lohan is that, you know, people do need money. <laughs> for, for, for yeah, exactly. Money. It's very legitimate. So people, there's an honest message there and, and they just tied it to this bigger, uh, more celebrity based situation. And I think it's, it's, it's absolutely authentic and it's absolutely spot on. And yep. so it's, it, it, so the strategy is important, but it's aligning current events to that. And the thing that jumps up to me when you say this and, and the revelation that I've just made in hearing this, and I know you've, I've, I've been in the room when you've talked about newsjacking before is, mm -hmm. is there's a, is my co-author in the paper napkin wisdom book is Jack Daly. And Jack likes to say that sales isn't about selling your stuff. It's about helping people buy as opposed to make, you know, selling your stuff to them. And there's no, there's no question about that. And just to riff off that for a second, people don't care about your products and services. So if you just talk about your products and services, no one cares. Mm -hmm. You know, if Mitch Jackson says, I've got, I'm a wonderful lawyer and I'm going to help you, no one cares. But if he's providing an analysis of the legal issues of a news story that people are talking about, that's helpful. Yeah, it's fa and it's and it's relevant because it, it, just as you did here, let's let's just sort of dissect a little bit of what you've done even here in describing newsjacking. What you've done, David, is you, you've given us examples, stories, right? Stories that we can relate to as entrepreneurs and saying, hey, you know, I could do that. And a lot of people say, hey, this stuff works for retail, and it won't work for me in service. But you've included a retail and a service story. Uh, yep. In the case, and if we have time, I'll give you a B two B one. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we're certainly going to do that. But but my 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 the intrigue of this is that it's the story that compels people to act because they relate to the story as opposed to the facts and figures that might be sitting in a brochure. So by by newsjacking, you actually create a story that people may or may not relate to, which helps that's, your strategy. Come yeah, about. that's exactly right. That's ex- that's exactly right. You're you're exactly right. And it was and it was interesting that you you picked up on the story aspect because there's no question that that's how this approach works. But yesterday I happened to be um, having a conversation about newsjacking with the world's foremost green chemist. So um, he's got a, a lab up here where I live in the Boston area where he's doing all kinds of real pioneering work on green chemistry, which is essentially um, how you can, uh, rather than force chemicals together to create something, you do it in a way that nature would intend. It's really interesting stuff. And I'm talking to him about this idea of newsjacking. And he kind of gets it. I mean, he's a very smart man, obviously. PhD, runs his own lab, um, really well known. Um, So he obviously gets it. But it wasn't until I started talking about um, the, the, the... dynamics of a news story illustrated by a a bell-shaped curve that he started to really get it. So the idea of the bell-shaped curve is that every story follows the same story arc. It's a bell-shaped curve. It starts slowly. It grows in importance. Typically, in the very beginning, it grows because uh, social media drives it. Then a little bit later, mainstream media picks up, and that starts to drive it. And then every single story, no matter how big, at some point starts to lose momentum and every single story then uh, begins a a gradual, gradual decline and nobody's interested in it at a certain point. And that particular bell shaped curve, I call it the life of a news story, might be over the course of a few hours. If it's a really really small sort of story, might be a few days, it might be a few weeks, it even could be a few months. Um, or if you take the U.S. presidential election, the entire thing is two years, although little stories pop up that might only be a couple of days around the presidential election. And um, he was just incredibly, as a scientist, was incredibly intrigued by the science of newsjacking. So it's very interesting to me. That's why I call it the art and science of injecting your ideas into a breaking news story, that there's a scientific component, but there's also this story-based component to it. I think that's fascinating. Um, Let's talk about that B2B example. Yeah, so um, like I said, I I love having examples from a number of different types of places because it proves that this idea works for anybody. So my my favorite B2B example is a, a story about a company named called Eloqua. Eloqua is a marketing automation software company, and the CEO of Eloqua, his name is Joe, was no, at the time Joe Payne. Um, Joe learned that one of his biggest competitors, a company called Market to Lead, had just been acquired by Oracle, by this giant software company. So what Joe did was he said, wow, that's interesting. I'm going to do a Google search and figure out what this means for me. He went to Google, typed in Oracle and market to lead. Now, remember, he's a CEO of a competitor. And the only thing that popped up on Google at the time he did the search, which was immediately after he learned that this acquisition had happened, there was one hit and it was on the Oracle website. And it was simply a three sentence announcement that said that Oracle had made this acquisition. It provided no background information, no facts, no quotes, no nothing. So Joe knew wow, I have an opportunity because everybody in the marketplace is going to want to understand what this acquisition means. And Oracle didn't provide any information. I'm the CEO of of the competing company. I have an opportunity. So he wrote a blog post, pushed it out in real time. Now, that's this idea of real time is so key because had he waited a day or two, there would the opportunity would have been lost. But if he's the first person to define what this acquisition means, then he's the one that control the narrative about what's happening in the news. So he does. He writes this great blog post. He pushes it out within about two hours after the acquisition was done, or sorry, while the a- acquisition was announced by Oracle. And in the blog post, he had quotes, uh, quotable quotes um, that he wrote. He analyzed what it 
the uh, acquisition means for the overall marketplace. He did nothing in any way disparaging to the competition. He, incur he, he said it was great that Oracle, this giant software company, was seeing the potential in the marketing automation software business. And then, um, predictably, I would suggest, <laughs> over the next few hours, as reporters and analysts were putting together their story about this acquisition, they then quoted him. They quoted Joe Payne, the CEO of the competitor. Uh, PC world, information world, um, uh, the analysts like Gartner and people like that, they all quoted the CEO of the competition because he was the only co person that provided any details or any color around the actual news, which, which was that this company was acquired. Then, very cleverly, as soon as that blog post was out, they also... Uh, over at Eloqua shared a link to that blog post through their social networks like Twitter and LinkedIn. They also shared a link to that blog post via email to people in their database that they thought might be interested in it. And as a result of that, they generated a million dollars worth of new business. And what's even more interesting to me is that within about a year, Oracle also bought Eloqua. <laughs> so I think it's kind of funny, right? If you can't beat them, I guess you have to buy them. Uh, and that acquisition was worth um, over $800 million. And uh, that acquisition I calculated based on the amount of revenue that Eloqua had at the time and the acquisition price um, valued each million dollars worth of revenue at $15 million on the acquisition price. So I call this my $16 million blog post because it was a million dollars in new revenue plus $15 million extra on the valuation by my calculation. Um, so a newsjacking um, uh, success in this case in the B2B world uh, worth $16 million. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the, let's also not, you know, hide the fact that none of this stuff, stuff happened overnight, right, David? I mean, th th this wasn't, this wasn't an overnight success in, in any of the cases in Eloqua, Jackson Wilson, or Cash for Purses. It, these are things that they, they practiced blogging, they practiced these things on an ongoing basis, and consistently got better and better at it. And, and now, you know, for example, Mitch has maybe, let's say, a more consistent level of success with it. Uh, Eloqua... I, I think there, there, there is some truth to that. For, um, and you've, you've hit on a couple of the points that are important. One point is you, you have to start blogging before you, you sort of do your, your newsjacking triumph, I, I guess is how I would put it. You have to have that blog established. You know, you have to have blogged a little bit to get the Google to know that you're out there. You know, you got to you got to do things like that um, to get going. The other thing is that you you have to have this real time mindset to be watching the news and to be aware of the sorts of stories that might crop up that you can tie your uh, your company or your brand or your or your own expertise to. So you've got to do that as well. Um, and then. Um, you know, I, I, I've illustrated th three, you know, incredible successes. You also have to recognize that you're not going to have an incredible success every time. In fact, most times you'll put out a wonderful blog post, a few people will read it, but you won't get quoted in the press. You won't generate any new business that you can directly attribute to it. Um, but I look at it the same way a venture capitalist would look at investing in companies. You know, a typical VC doesn't say, oh, every company I'm going to invest in is going to be a home run and go public on the stock market and return millions and millions of dollars. No, a VC says, I need to invest in 25 companies and I'm hopeful that one or two will become hugely successful and that helps, uh, that's enough to pay for all the 25 investments. And I think it's very similar that, you know, if, you're, if you've been blogging, you're consistently pushing in, in good information out there, um, you um, are following the news and looking for stories that you can tie your business to, and you put out 20 blog posts, maybe one of them will hit and become worth a million dollars in business to you. Um, and, and that's the way you need to think about it. And so, yeah, there's no question that you have to kind of keep going at it to make this work. Uh, but it is an incredible way to generate 
um, business. Uh, it's an incredible way to get into the media. And, you know, like I said earlier, I've got all this um, written out, uh, sorry, all of this uh, in an online course that I'm offering at newsjacking.com. Yeah, David, I want to thank you for joining me here today. Really appreciate everything that you shared. And, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about how we can even use this with paper napping wisdom. So thanks. To oh, yeah, there's no question you can in my mind. I mean, everybody can. You know, here I am. I, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm just run a one person business. I, I write books, give speeches um, and do a little tiny bit of consulting. And I, I try to use news jacking as much as I can. So I'm sure you can use, use it to your advantage as well. Outstanding. Thanks again, David. You got it. My pleasure. Thank you. What a great conversation, David. I'm so excited that you came back again to share this with us and and really think about it. Think about being the Ravens and the 49ers going to head to head in Super Bowl. And all of a sudden in that power outage for 34 minutes, spectators across the globe were held captive by the difficulty. And then... And then Oreo just tweeted, power out, no problem. You can still dunk in the dark. Incredible. Incredible exploitation of opportunity by Oreo in a second, in a flash. And they were there. And so many times those opportunities sit right in front of us. They sit right in front of us in real time. And the millions and millions and millions of dollars that were spent on advertising for that Super Bowl went away relative to the power of that opportunity. What opportunities are occurring in your business right now? What opportunities that if you put your ear to the ground could create an opportunity for you to insert your brand, your story, your idea and your name in the middle of this momentum that is already occurring around you. It is far easier to pick on what's already happening than to create your own momentum out of nothing. Just grab the bumper of the story going by. Remember when you were a kid and maybe you did this or maybe I was just too crazy and I was the one who did it, but I'd be on my skateboard and you'd grab the bumper or you'd be on your bike and you'd grab the bumper of a vehicle going by and catch a ride in your neighborhood. That's what I'm talking about here. You can catch a ride. So here's the steps again, if you're remembering from what Dave suggests, you can write them down, have a legitimate tie to the story, right? So it has to have an authentic story with the connection to the story. Otherwise it doesn't make any sense, right? Or it looks forced or it looks unauthentic or it looks pitchy. Timing is key and you can control the narrative by striking when the iron's hot and you're not going to get this right right away. It's not going to be a one and done. It's not going to be the first time out of the gate. Bam, you've got this figured out. No, you're going to have to try to work this a few times, but you know that waiting a few days or a few hours can make your story lose its relevance. Imagine that Oreo. If Oreo tweeted that the next day, it would lose. It would lose a lot of its gusto. And finally, success takes time. Success may not be instant and you've got to work on your blogging rhythm. You've got to have a rhythm to this to get this going. Think about our podcast, Paper Napkin Wisdom, the blog and the podcast and all the content that comes out, including the book that became a number one on Amazon. All of those things, that took time. This is episode 144. None of that happened overnight. And still... Absolutely. Could we do better newsjacking? Could we insert ourselves in the story much better? Absolutely, we could. And that's something that we're going to take away from David. David, thank you for reminding me of the importance of newsjacking. What are you doing to newsjack? I'd love to hear your story. I'd love to hear what you're doing with your brand and how you're inserting yourself into the story that's relevant, authentic, and legitimate around you. Please tweet me at Wise Napkin. You can also find me on Facebook. Paper Napkin Wisdom is the site on Facebook. We have all kinds of behind-the-scenes information there. Follow me on Facebook as Govin J. Raman or on Paper Napkin Wisdom. We've got lots of information that goes out every single day, every single day, 365 days of the year. If this is your first time listening, thank you for taking us a listen and giving us a try. This is 144. I have 143 other ones. Just subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, 
Google Play Music. You can also just subscribe at papernapkinwisdom.com. My name is Govind J. Raman. This was Paper Napkin Wisdom. Make it a great day.